Hello friends, this video on biodiversity and conservation part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us talk about genetic diversity. So this is genetic variety within a particular species. So right now we are focusing only on one species. Now when you take an example of a species, it could be for example dog. So all dogs belong to, I mean most of the dogs belong to a same species. However, you also have different species of dog. So let us suppose we are considering one particular species of a dog or one particular species of a cat. So do you think that all the cats which belong to the same species, they look exactly similar? No, not really. They also have some of the other differences. Some of them might have long ears. Some of them might have white color of their fur. Some of them might be smaller in size. Some might be bigger in size. So there are differences even between organisms belonging to the same species. For example, all human beings belong to Homo sapiens. But does that mean that all human beings look exactly similar to each other? No, not again. That's because Due to their differences in the genes, different human beings look different. So this kind of diversity or this kind of variety falls under the category of genetic diversity. So here I have taken examples of dog. So even if all these belong to the same species, they might have a lot of differences from each other. So each individual has genes and the genes are the source of its unique features. By now we all know that genes are the one which actually help in the synthesis of proteins. And since the way the proteins will be synthesized, the way the features or the characteristics of that particular individual will be. So again, you can take another example of genetic diversity. Let us consider a flower, for example, the rose. So in rose also, you will see that a lot of different varieties of rose are seen. Some of them are red in color, some are pink in color, some are yellow, some, are, some do have mixed color as well. So why do we have those differences, even though they all belong to the same species of plant? That is because of the different genetic arrangement that is due to the different genes present in each of them. So this kind of diversity where organisms belonging to a particular species differ from each other and these differences arise due to difference in the genes. So this is called genetic diversity. So now let us talk about species diversity. Now here we will not concentrate to one particular species but here we will go at a little higher level. So here the variety of species which are seen in a particular location. So here the location is fixed. So if you are talking about a particular region, so only in that region this different species which are present there. Now different species in the sense let us suppose we consider a particular area so in that area you might have dogs you might have cats you might have cows you might have human beings so you have different species but they all are present in the same area now due to the presence of different species the different variety of living organisms are present there now you would be surprised to know that almost 1.8 million of different species live on the earth in fact, this data that is 1.8 million is less, actually the value is even more. But the thing is, not all the species have been identified so far because how, how do we get to know that, okay, these many species exist? That's because the species get identified, so they get described and discovered. But many of them remain, I mean, are yet to be discovered. So that means this number or this count of 1.8 million is also less. The actual count will actually go much beyond this. Now, it has been observed that these different species will live in different areas depending upon various factors, for example, climate, availability of their food, their comfort and so many other factors. For example, when you choose your house in a city, so you look at various parameters. Let us suppose you want to buy a house or you want to rent out a house to live. So what are the factors that you will take into consideration? You will see, that, okay, how far is the house from your school? How far is the house? is from your office how I mean how is the locality nearby so these are some of the factors which will be considered before we take a house so in a way so we will basically prefer a location where we are comfortable to live so similarly the species also they might have different choices of location so some of the species might be present in a particular location and might not be present in some other location 
So depending upon their choice, we see that the number of species in different locations again are different. So there are certain locations which have more variety of species and we say that those communities are more diverse because they have more variety. So let us take an example. Let us suppose we have two communities. So this is one area and this is another area. So this is location one and this is location two. So in location one, we see that this is the area where we have more variety of species. So here you can see elephants, giraffe, uh, lion, birds, monkeys. So you can see many different variety of living organisms. Whereas in location two, you really don't see a lot of diversity. You really don't see a lot of variety. So what do we say? We will say that location one is is more diverse when compared to location 2. That's because location 1 has more number of species when compared to location 2. So this is about species diversity where we just try to see how many different types of species are present in a particular location. So let us look at ecological diversity. Now, as I said, it is the variety of living organisms at ecosystem level. Now, I am sure that all of you know by now what is ecosystem. It is nothing but uh, the... So when we talk about ecological diversity, we talk about the diversity at various ecosystem level. Now, there are many types of ecosystems which exist on this earth. For example, there are deserts, forests, mountains, slopes ocean, grasslands, etc. So they are all different types of ecosystems where a group of living organisms live. So now each of these ecosystems might have different variety of living organisms. So certain regions might have variety of uh, ecosystems. For example, if you talk about a place like um, India, so India have a large variety of ecosystems. So in India, you have deserts, you have mountains, you have oceans. So the variety of ecosystems is more when compared to certain other regions which have lesser variety of ecosystems. So we say that India would be ecologically more diverse when compared to some other particular place. So that is what we mean by ecological diversity. So when we say genetic diversity, we mean that a particular species is genetically diverse. So it has a large variety of genetically different organisms. When we say a particular place has species diversity, that means that particular place has a good variety of different species. When we say ecological diversity, that means that particular place have a good variety of different ecosystems. So that is called ecological diversity diversity. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.